What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Daily Draft brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm your host and the publisher of Packer Report, Ross Uglum. And today we are talking about a national champion, and that is tight end A.J. Barner from Michigan, another mid-round target. We put, we spent, I think, you know, lots of time um, talking about targets from like pick 25 to pick 58 pick 41 and this would not probably be one of those guys right and that's fine and we've also frankly talked about some people or players being maybe mocked to green bay in those areas that they probably aren't interested in which i would say that unfortunately my last uh video about xavier worthy would be one of those guys that they're probably not super interested in despite um some of the really nice things that i have to say about him and 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 kind of you know what i think he can be um, as an NFL player and potentially a member of the Packers, but there are guys that they're just not probably in on, and Xavier Worthy's one of those. Not sure A.J. Barner is. I think he might be a guy that they are interested in. And we'll talk about kind of what he can be uh, as a player today on the, your daily draft prospect primer. A.J. Barner, the first thing that that comes out to you is a, an excellent frame. Um, big, big guy, uh, six foot six, I think. If we can take a real quick look at the old mock draftable spider web, I know he's taller than six five. Um, yeah, six foot six, um, 88th percentile height, excuse me, 80, 85th percentile height. And then the, the other thing that I noted was 88th percentile wingspan, really long arms, enormous uh, catch radius. And you know, I, I think you can add some weight. Uh, 251 for a, a guy who is 6'6 six, six is, is something that I think can be added to. And and really, you know, we're talking about that third tackle position, right? The Mercedes Lewis position. We'll talk about that a little more as we get into um, fits and we get into, uh, you know, kind of why I think he, he might be kind of Packersy. And and there there's some reasons that that he might not be as well, but that's the first thing that jumps off, right? About just looking at him, seeing him on film, is his frame and his wingspan and his catch radius, and it's just he's a big human being. He is a big uh, football player. He is the highest graded run blocker in 2023 in the FBS with at least 100 run blocking snaps, and there were 46 tight ends that qualified you, you get into a lot of 11 personnel a lot of 10 personnel um, in college football now the tight end position itself is reduced and the tight end position that actually run block is reduced as well so out of 46 guys um and these are these are pro football focus grades you can have your disagreements with them that's fine but him being the highest graded run blocking tight end in college football last year with you know of guys who have, have blocked at least for 100 snaps I think it has to be put into some part of your analysis. <laughs> you know, you can you can hate PFF. You can talk about how trash you think they are. He he's good. Um, he's not lost by the way catching the ball. Uh, and that I think is is a little bit important, right? Um, caught sixty nine percent of the balls thrown his way. You just look at it's it's a you know statistical profile that's not going to go crazy. Uh, uh, Barner was an Indiana transfer. Um was okay at Indiana, but did have his best receiving year at Michigan, 11 yards plus uh, per reception, um, 22 catches for 249 yards. They were a run heavy offense. Um, he was primary, primarily used as a run blocker. They had Blake Corum as a mouth to feed. They had Roman Wilson as a mouth to feed, right? They had other things to do on offense other than force feed AJ part of the ball there. That was not their offense. Um, you know, when the sense that that was very much Oregon state's offense with Luke Musgrave, he was their best guy. Tucker, Tucker Craft, he was easily South Dakota State's best guy. Isaiah Davis is a running back that's important to what South Dakota State did, and he'll be in this year's draft, but Tucker Craft was their best pass catcher, and there's really no argument there. Uh, I would not make the same comparison there for A.J. Barner. Uh, they had other things to do on offense, Michigan did. That functional strength is real, uh, both as a blocker and throughout the route. He's just strong as hell. And um, when we're talking about sometimes these guys with, elite length they get a little spindly right they get not that they they lose leverage um i would not classify one of my favorite tight end prospects in the god knows how long luke musgrave as quote unquote strong as hell luke's going to be an awesome player i have a much higher grade strong as Arn is very very young uh, and and it's fun to impose in a college where sometimes 
is is a little bit test short area. He just didn't run. Had a good ten. It had a good broad jump, had a good vertical. Not great, none of it. Uh, his three cone was great. And I think that kind of is is more like the 10-yard split, the three cone, that's more what you see on film. Uh, long speed isn't there. But some of the, the other stuff is. And and he's a fine athlete. Um, I don't know that he did enough tests to qualify for the RAS, but he's not a he's not a non-athlete, if you will. I mean, he's, he's fine. He's not craft. He's not Musgrave. But he's mostly... Uh, mostly fine. Okay. Um, high points. The football well should be a red zone weapon. Um, not not weapon one. But the Packers already have plenty of other guys that to worry about in the red zone. Uh, that that block for two seconds and release, or um, you know, you got a safety on you who's five eleven and a half. Go up and get it. That that could be you know two three times a season for AJ Barner. I think that's within the realm of the things that he could do to help an NFL football team. I want to reiterate, he's just the best run blocking tight end in this class. Um, And I know the uh, phrase, and it's not even close, is super overused, but it kind of isn't that close, especially with the top guys. Bowers doesn't block even close to this. Jatavian Sanders doesn't block even close to this. Um, You know, Sinnott, even, who I love, he's not, he doesn't block quite like Barner. Um, I think Sinnott and maybe Brevin Span Ford from Minnesota are sort of your blocker blocker uh comps right but Senate's like six three send it's a fullback type block you know lead block Senate is a lead blocker AJ Barner is a third tackle they're two different things you can get it done in a similar way but they're two different things two different parts of your offense that you're potentially trying to add if you're Brian Gutekunst or really any NFL team and I, he's honestly he's pretty darn good in the pass block game as well does not have a sack allowed credited now how many opportunities did he get? I think I looked, it was like 103. I'd have to, don't, don't quote me on that. Cause that's just off of, you know, my research and my notes. I don't have it here on the, the sheet that I read off of, but I think he had a hundred plus pass pro opportunities and was good. Um, again, didn't, didn't allow a sack in Michigan played three years in Indiana, didn't allow a sack. And, and sometimes it's help, right? It's chip. How many times is he really taking on a defensive end one-on-one and pass pro or a blitzing nickel or a blitzing safety, how many, you know, or blitzing linebacker, how many times is it really his responsibility to keep the quarterback alive? I don't know, but um, he did not give up a sack, gave up like, I think three hurries. He's pretty good in pass pro. And that is something when we're talking about that Mercedes Lewis role, which is what we will talk about when we get into Packers fit, that's, it's important. That's big. That's, you know, what, what uh, we are, are looking for. So, uh, getting into the cons, I will say, you just go look at it, and this is going to be classic in the comments. Ross, you care about the Underwear Olympics, this, that, and the other. Okay, fine. There are basically no successful receiving tight ends who ran a 486. 486 is slow. It it, just, it is. It's slow. Um, you're not winning downfield running a 486. And it's the most basic measurable Right, we like to talk a lot about three cone, which he was awesome. We like to talk about broad jump, vert jump, all those things are fine. Four eight six is unfine, and again, like you, you go through the list of successful receiving tight ends in the NFL. Uh, you can maybe try to find me one that ran four eight six, but I, I don't know that you're going to. Um, in general, he is not the freak uh, athlete that the Packers have started to have success with, right? Because you know we talked a little bit about on the tight end show. Um, where it's like the, the Packers have had these misses, right? The, uh, the, um, like the, the, the Jay Sternberger of it all, the Josiah DeGuara of it all, the Richard Rogers of it all, where they've kind of gone away from drafting these freak athletes and just drafted guys they like or guys they in DeGuara's example, you know, that a guy they thought they could have for a specific role. And then I, I think, and, and let me just double check this before I speak out of turn. I think, and not that this like led them to water, but yeah, Robert Tunyon was a really good relative athletic score guy. And that's maybe not why they loved Robert Tunyon, but like that, that has been what we've talked about, which is tight end is like edge. Freaks do well at tight end. Go look. Mark Andrews, freak. George Kittle, super freak. Travis Kelsey, freak. Vernon Davis, super freak. I mean, you, you can go, and, and and are there maybe exceptions? Yeah, probably. I don't know for sure. 
Um, you know, the top guys of late have been freaks. And so the Packers going after two freaks and Kraft and Musgrave and seemingly hitting on both is unsurprising. Tanyan being basically as productive or more productive than pick your pick your guy, Sternberger, DeGuara, Richard Rogers. I'm pretty sure Jermichael was a freak too. I would be very surprised if he wasn't. Ah. Kind of, yeah, to be honest. It's interesting. Kind of, yeah. 6.42. I mean, not unathletic, but interesting. Interesting. Uh, got hurt. Good player, but interesting that he was, because he felt like a freak on the football field, especially before he blew out his ACL. I mean, they ran that 2010 offense through him, but anyway, um, and there's nothing wrong with being a 65th percentile athlete. It's just not Kraft and Musgrave. And I guess that's what I'm saying on the con side is Barner can have a role in the NFL. Barner can be a good player in the NFL. Barner can be an important player in the NFL. He is a very low percentage play to be a top 10 or 12 and tight end in the league. Meaning he's your starter. Green Bay ain't going to be the place for that for him anyway. But meaning he's your starter and you're hoping that he becomes a top half of the league starter. Most guys with his profile aren't, especially the guys that run as slow as he does. Um, so the, the upside, the ceiling, I don't think is tremendously high for A.J. Barner which is, again, not to say, and especially where I have him ranked, which is not to say that he's going to be a bad pick. I, I want to be very clear about that. Um, I don't see him as a, a yak threat um, with the ball in his hands. He's nothing special. And you, the, the con that I – or the, the last, like, bullet point that I have here is you just have to admit that he is what he is. You have to admit to yourself what you're seeking when you draft A.J. Barner, and that is a player who can – understand how to get open in zone coverage, be a red zone threat, be a check down threat, and block the hell out of people. And if he can do all of those things, he's a valuable member of a roster, and that's what we care about. Don't know how helpful he's going to be on special teams running a 4-8-6. But on offense, there is a role if he pans out in the way that I think he can pan out. And that's why I'm asking, or if you're asking, um, does he have a Packers fit? I think he has a very good fit. I think you would take AJ Barner, not early, but you would take AJ Barner and put him in a competition with Ben Sims, because I think AJ Barner can be the closest thing that you've had to Mercedes Lewis since Mercedes Lewis. And it's not like a big dog has been gone for a long time, but I mean, he has, if he's six, six, two fifty five, I think he absolutely can get to two sixty five without any tremendous concern about speed you know loss or whatever and all of a sudden he starts to become with what he already put on film your your quote unquote your third tackle and there's enough there in the passing game where it's not a dead giveaway if he's in the game but it's not i wouldn't call it necessarily a dead giveaway if ben sims is in the game either i uh i don't know I, I I like him i think he has a specific role young player he's only 21 they like that maybe he can become more um, I would say the athletic profile, or at least just the long speed, concerns me, but we'll we'll see. We will see. Um, and then I, I would say the other reason that he's a fit is that he's not another craft in Musgrave. And I did the tight end fits for the guide for the the power the Green Bay draft guide powered by Pack Report. Buy it, use promo code daily for ten percent off. And a lot of the guys that I've like Cade Stover, love him, really good player. Excited about Cade Stover. I um, think he's going to be a starter in the NFL. He is just another Kraft Musgrave. He does no place on the Packers roster because he's not going to be better than those two, or his per, his percentage chance of being better than those two is low. I think you have two specific roles available in Green Bay, and that is Ben Sims competition as the primary blocking tight end and a Josiah DeGuara replacement, which they might already have in Henry Pearson. I don't know. Those are the two roles that I think are, I don't understand what just happened there. That was exciting. Um, those are the two roles that um, I think are available, not why tight end. <laughs> why tight end is not available. Why tight end is Luke Musgrave, and he's backed up by Tucker Craft. That's what that's what's available, I think, um, is the fullback halfback role, which is not Barner, 
and the Mercedes role, which could be Barner. And that is why I have a specific show for him. That's why I think he's an interesting target where I kind of have him ranked. And if he goes earlier than that, you just kind of throw your hands up and you say, all right, somebody else wanted him for that role more than Green Bay did. Over on AJ Barner, I've given him a round four grade. I excuse me, a round five grade. I think he has a very specific role as a non-starter in the National Football League. And that's fine. In round five, you give me a solid number tight two, number two tight end for most teams, number three for the Packers, who blocks his butt off, can pass pro, can do enough, you know, you, you have an injury at tackle, you bring him in, help chip on, you know, a, like a superstar defensive end and maybe save you a ball game. Uh, that, that's a, that's a round five player for me all day long. He's my 138th overall guy. I think you have to find a specific role for AJ Barner, but that role exists within today's NFL. He is my seventh ranked tight end, but I think he's a better Packer fit than tight end seven. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching or listening. If you are on the podcast side, as I have mentioned, um, by the Packer report draft guide, there should be a link right here in the show description. Check us out over at Packer Report. You can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter. I am at Ross Uglum. And do everything that you're supposed to do here uh, on the Daily Draft, uh, excuse me, here on the Packaday Podcast feed, which is like, subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you get every single ounce of Packers content delivered to you on a daily basis that you require. Have an awesome rest of your Friday, folks, and go Pack Go!